Hey guys, welcome back to Mize Workshop. So right now I'm out in our garden, which really I say my wife's garden, because she's the gardener and I'm the builder. And I decided to come out here because we are going to walk through the garden and kind of go over a punch list of what needs to be finished in this space. Uh, we do most of our fall gardening in the high tunnels. I'm gonna take the opportunity where there's less plants to be mindful of and damage to Try and get as much done now honestly i'm setting the goal to try and get all of it done but things happen you know it may not happen exactly how i'm thinking but i'm saying this now because i want to be able to hold myself accountable to it well to go through a honey-do list you probably should bring out the honey <laughs> which is this way hey honey hey honey so if anybody is not familiar with who this is this is my wife jessica oh. um we have our farm roots and refuge and she is my forever partner. Where was I going? The garden to do. Oh yes, we're going through the honeydew list. Yep. Of stuff that we want to see finished. We want to bring this space up to its full potential. Right. All right. So we're. Have do... Have you told them that I'm an idea factory? That must um, be right I haven't really had the chance to tell them that yet. But <laughs> if and if you're watching from Roots and Refuge, <laughs> you, you probably already know. Um. It's a regular occurrence that Jessica sits down and, you know, we're going to hang out, spend some time together, and she'll just be like, so I had an idea, <laughs> and that can mean that a lot of things. Makes you have some work to do. <laughs> All right. So we have some ideas. Let's go look at some of those ideas. All right. Take us, take us through. <laughs> Why do I feel uncomfortable being on camera while you're holding the camera? Is it because of my this facial expressions? Is, this is so boring. Because right. you're looking good, girl. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So our garden, we, we call it the garden belt. And the original plan was this, this garden runs all the way down our driveway. And it, it essentially goes down to where you get to our space where our house is, where the shop is, and all of that. Uh, when you first come in the gate, the orchard is to the right. We're not touching that right now, but that is a really big space. has lots of fruit trees and stuff in it. And right past the orchard is where you get into what I consider the garden, which we have two high tunnels that are 26 by 60 feet there. Right past that, we have a space that will be an in-ground garden space again this following season where we'll grow a lot of in-ground things like potatoes and uh, melons and stuff like that. Right past that space is actually a big area that was previously an in-ground garden. Jeremiah's got some ideas for things he wants to build because we're actually downsizing our growing space a little bit. It's more than we need. And then when you get past that area, you come into what is our raised bed garden. Um, here we have quite a lot of raised garden beds with a greenhouse and a cottage garden. And then the, in the middle of this side of the raised bed garden, we have this pavilion. What I'm really wanting to do is fence this in and create barriers. One, we have like pesky things like guineas that get into the garden. And of course we do have deer around here. They're not a terrible problem, but they do occasionally get into the garden. Uh, more than anything though, I want the fence for a barrier, but it's also a really important part of garden design to have structure and line. And I love arbors. I love having a, a distinguished entry point into the garden. And whenever we planned this whole thing we planned on having multiple entry points here in the middle we have um, the pavilion i know that roofing this is kind of on the priority list it is uh we have this pea gravel in the the walkways um we started to put this in we started having some supply issues we kind of put a hold on it and we've discussed maybe doing something different so i know that that's on the list some of the things that we've talked about, I know Maya's mentioned, I would really like some sort of wash station out here. So for instance, when I'm pulling a bunch of stuff up that's got soil on it, uh, where I can get it clean to bring into the house because I routinely carry a bunch of stuff that's got soil all over it in the house. I've got a big pile of ginger in there right now. So this is the, the point that was designed to kind of be the main entrance to the garden. Down where we started on this video, it's sort of like the end entrance, but right here, I really want this to kind of have the wow factor of being something really beautiful. Um, I have a very particular rose. It was on the gate at my old house, and I'm planning on being able to get those again, an arbor rose. 
and being able to have like a really cool gate that lines up that frames this greenhouse really well because right now this is really wild and crazy but when this thing is at peak this garden is absolutely gorgeous and i'm just imagining the fountain going the greenhouse framed an arbor full of roses it's very exciting i have an idea here now we have the the table in the pavilion and it's really lovely and i really like it it's a six-seater table I often come out and drink coffee there. It's a great place to break during the day when you're working because it's under the shade if a rain shower comes over. However, I did have an idea for this space. When we laid this garden out, I don't know exactly what I was planning right here, but I ended up with a pretty wide space that's pretty long. And one of the things that I suggested that I thought would be really cool would be have a, like, have a longer dining table out here, um, you know, with some kind of lights hanging over. I have this very romantic notion of having like garden tea parties and stuff like that and that's kind of what I imagine here like right next to the cottage garden right near the shade cloth I think it could be really lovely I love incorporating living spaces in my growing space because while we do this to grow food it's also very much like a a big part of just my hobby it's passion it's something that's definitely helped me a lot in my health in every aspect and so I love to be in the garden so there's a lot of seating spaces everywhere and I know I already have one table that we can eat at but another might be kind of cool it's probably pretty obvious even at the end of the season here that aesthetic really matters to me a lot I like my garden to be a beautiful space for the aforementioned reasons um, so I am I'm kind of picturing these fences incorporating some kind of growing spaces outside and, and different things just making it pretty oh and one more thing we talked about an outdoor shower well did we <laughs> was that one of those ones you brought up while I was still like half asleep in the morning you know it'd be we'll really figure cool it out. what it's would be really bathtub. cool <laughs> I know I had a bathtub. Okay. I put soil and plants in it. This is Another a perfect <laughs> example of what I was talking about, and it has played out naturally, like just completely naturally. So, all right, I think we can take it from here. I think we've got it. We understand the mission. So it's actually getting dark, and we've got to go spend some time with our kids before the end of the day. Yep. So I'm gonna come back out in the morning and kind of just go through what I'm envisioning. Probably have to start considering like where to start. Good morning, guys. I'm back out in the garden. Uh, we're going to go over some more details or more specifics of like what it's going to take, the different projects that need to get done to see this garden reach its full potential. Um, but that is actually one of the reasons why I wanted to shoot this video, because I think it's actually going to transform considerably uh, between now and spring, especially if I can get everything that I'm hoping to get accomplished done. Um, it's just going to be a really cool transformation. And so being a finished carpenter, I love putting the finishing details on stuff, but I also really enjoy being able to go back to almost like the vision casting and being like, here's what I'm seeing, here's what I'm hoping to, for it to look like, and then being able to compare it to how it actually was finished. Because, you know, some things may change, some ideas may pivot, you know, we may not do it exactly how we're saying now. I think that's part of what's cool about doing a kind of before video. And another thing it's going to do is kind of give me like, uh, an accountability list of like what I hope to accomplish, you know, what was Jessica envisioning. All right, let's jump into some more specific details about what we actually are wanting to do and what I think it's going to look like. So to start, like we're going to have to do the perimeter fence. Um, one, to keep stuff out. One, to provide those barriers that Jessica was talking about. Like she's always loved the secret garden kind of feel and not having the fences up is definitely not uh, contributing to that uh, desire. So we're going to do a really cool perimeter fence. Uh, we're going to do a four rail perimeter fence, which is very similar to like the H braces and like the entryways that I've done into the property. And I'm going to continue that style through the whole perimeter fence. And I think that that fence is going to look really good. It's going to tie into the rest of the property. I'll probably use uh, treated posts, but I've got a bunch of one by four cypress left over from doing the treehouse and some other projects like that that I'm going to use for the rails. And it's going to accomplish the goal of setting those barriers like I said, for critters, but also for establishing like where exactly is the garden space and giving Jessica something to grow on that kind of adds that barrier, that hidden garden feel. 
you know, when I'm building the fence, though, there's another aspect that I really wanted to contribute is lighting. I've always loved lighting spaces, you know, underneath the treehouse, uh, in the uh, milking area of the barn. I add string lights. Uh, we've always loved those. And so I'm going to bring that element into the garden space. One of the things that's going to kind of go hand in hand with that perimeter fence is going to be the entrances. I actually have the arbors. I ordered them with the intention of trying to get them put in and some of this other stuff like the fence and all that this last spring ended up not being the case because honestly the house and thinking that we were going to build the house kind of like took my attention and focus off of that. I have the arbors here. They're stored still in their box. I'm going to have to build some planter boxes around them for the roses to get planted in, but that won't be that complicated. But we do have to get them built and establish the entrances to the garden area. Another thing we had mentioned and is going to be somewhat of a big undertaking but a very beneficial one is we need to get an irrigation system set up. I've got some of that work done back when we were laying out the garden space. So a couple years ago I was trying to think ahead then and put in a one and a half inch main line down this back corridor that runs between the well house and the high tunnels. The irrigation system is probably the thing that I feel the least confident in. I you know, can do plumbing, um, but it's just not something I've done a lot of. And then within plumbing, you know, running irrigation systems for gardens is also not something that I've just done a ton of. So I can't accomplish it. I will figure it out and you guys will be there for the whole process. All right, next thing that I is coming to mind is the pathways. So we had mentioned and showed that we like have done some gravel and you know how that's worked out. Hasn't really been great. We've got a ton of stuff kind of popping up and growing through the fabric that we tried to put down. You know, I've done a ton of like repair work of trying to like pull the gravel back and figure out how to keep grass from growing up through it. It's just been a constant fight to try and keep that looking the way that we had hoped. Um, the other thing that we've learned is that honestly, the gravel is extremely loud in shooting videos. Um, it almost makes it hard to hear sometimes. And so that wasn't a great effect. I didn't really think about that when we were um, pursuing this as a solution for the pathways. And so we've actually decided to just not continue with that. So I'm going to have to do a lot of work kind of undoing some stuff that we've done. But we're going to pull all the pea gravel out and find a different use for it. Um, and actually what we've decided to do is we're going to continue the flagstone pathways that we did in the pavilion and we're going to continue that out through the rest of the walkways throughout the garden. Um, that's kind of a big undertaking. It's going to be a lot of like material. It's not a lot of complicated materials, but it's essentially just the flagstone, the concrete that goes underneath it, and then the mortar that goes in, into the cracks and then obviously the labor that goes into laying it. I'm actually not going to be doing this job by myself by any means. I'll bring my friend Michael Ball back out who's helped us do all the other flagstone that we've done. That's going to be probably a project that's going to be ongoing through the spring. All right, so we need to repair the two shade cloths. Uh, the one on top of the window greenhouse uh, actually did not get damaged in the storm. Uh, in the fall and the winter when it starts to get like consistently cold, we actually will take the shade cloth off of the window greenhouse to help keep the heat up. Um, especially when Jessica is starting seeds in like February. Uh, so I had actually had that stored and it accidentally got uh, sucked into the lawnmower. That corner got shredded, which is preventing us from actually uh, stretching it out and installing it like we should. So I've got to get another one of those and get it ready for spring uh, growing. We will take this old one off and then we'll just put the new one up once we get back around. But then the bigger project is going to be fixing the uh, shade cloth uh, suspension system that was damaged in the hurricane over the three long tomato beds. It's kind of an extensive project because there's one particular pole that's uh, been warping and leaning um, and probably because of the tension we put on it but what I'm gonna do is either replace that or I've got an idea of maybe pulling it up and flipping it. Either way I'm gonna have to do something to fix that or it's just gonna continue to fall in and mess up the tension of the system. So anyways, we're going to have to rework that whole suspension system, but we'll get that done. Another thing is we need to repair the fountain in front of the window greenhouse. I've gone through two different pumps that have gotten essentially clogged and we didn't catch it in time to clean it. And so it ended up burning up. Actually, I think the first one burned up because 
the water had had leaked out somehow and we didn't catch that and the pump burned up i'm gonna do some probably youtube watching some reading whatever information i can find about how to do this right uh, and try and get the fountain where it can be functional for the whole season. Now we need to roof the pavilion that we're sitting underneath. Uh, you know, we've had it framed for a while and then I actually had an intention of roofing it whenever we had some other roofing projects coming to the farm. So like if we were going to, when we were going to build the house, I was just going to have them roof it when the house was built or if we had gotten to the shop build and we we're going to roof that but i've decided that honestly i'm just going to roof it myself it's not that big of a roofing project and getting everything to square up won't be as difficult just because it's like i said it's very small jessica had also mentioned yesterday wanting to put a longer table in that empty space over by the long tomato beds i'm thinking it's going to have to be some kind of wood that is weather and bug resistant so maybe cedar um maybe cypress i've honestly thought about maybe ordering some cedar go ahead and order it now um and get some thicker material and maybe do like a timber frame type table uh, that's got not a lot of, uh, you know, hardware joinery, but like maybe try some mortise and tenon, maybe get me a, a little bit of experience before we get into the big shop build. I'm not sure on that, but I will figure out a table for that space. Okay. So we're progressing towards the high tunnels, um, moving from the raised bed garden towards the high tunnels. We've got this big open space here. So the first thing that we're going to do is add a permanent chicken area for a small flock of like silkies or something similar for Jessica right here by the garden. You know, she's always loved those birds, but we've never really, uh, they're not real practical when you have like a production flock that's like laying for consumption. And so we've never really uh, prioritized having them, but I know that she's always loved them. So we're gonna do just a small chicken coop, 10, 15 of those size birds, silkies or something similar. So moving past the chicken yard for Jessica Silky's uh, pet chicken area, we're gonna do a composting area. I'm going to get into some of Charles Dowding's teachings on compost and set up a similar system of what he's done. You know, when we met him this past summer and I listened to his talk on compost, I really felt like, you know, we could just take the information he was giving in his book and apply it and be able to start making some good compost for the garden. And also in this area, I'm going to do some kind of like storage shed for shovels and uh, just a catch-all for like different buckets and cups and things like that. And just give us a storage place for the garden. We don't currently have one, so stuff kind of gets strewn everywhere. All right, so I was actually about to close out this video and I was looking over the list of stuff that I made with Jessica yesterday and there was one thing that I did for a kind of skip over accidentally and that is she really wanted a washing station something that she could pick fruit tomatoes whatever it is uh, peppers cucumbers and be able to wash them outside uh, before we take them to either the pantry or the inside kitchen to process or do whatever we're going to do with them and so I am going to set that up in this space right here and I know that there's also a couple other round beds that she wants to add to this artichoke area. Okay, so that's gonna wrap this up. Uh, I know that was a lot of talking and explanation, but again, I really wanted to make a solid beginning reference point video to kind of show, okay, here's where we're at, here's where we're hoping to go. And I hope that it's you know going to be something that over this process is gonna be a cool point of reference to go back to say oh wow they talked about this this is how it turned out that's really cool so thank you guys for all your support uh, I hope that you know you guys are excited to see the garden reach its full potential as I am uh, I'm looking forward to getting into it the completion of the garden space is going to be probably my biggest focus between now and back and getting back around to the next growing season so Again, thanks for your guys' support, and I will catch you guys on the next one.